welcome to Ask Mo TV. We are here today with Dr. Michael Wald, Doctor of Nutrition and Director of Nutritional Services at Integrated Medicine of Mount Kisco, PC. Our topic today is absorption of food. How are the different food groups such as carbohydrates and proteins absorbed by the body? Well, as different names would imply, the body's digestive process is quite different to absorb proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. Ultimately, though, when the body does digest protein, carbohydrates, and fats, everything is eventually broken down to a glucose molecule because that's the, the preferred form of fuel for cells. But the process of breaking down or digesting a protein, a carbohydrate, and a fat is, is very varied in the body. So, for example, starches or carbohydrates digestion first begins in the mouth and then continues in the small intestine with the aid of pancreatic enzymes which digest um, carbohydrates. Uh, proteins digestion begins in the stomach with stomach acid and then continues in the small intestine with the pancreas again but with a protein digesting enzyme or group of enzymes known as proteases. That digestion uh, starts first in the small intestine with the uh, secretion of an, uh, the group of enzymes by the pancreas known as lipases. So as you can see, the digestive process is uh, very detailed and involves different acids and enzymes to break down different types of foodstuffs, which is a fancy term for protein, carbohydrates, and fats. But the takeaway from this is that 99% of all absorption of nutrition in the body is in the small intestine, the large intestine, or the colon, is responsible for some absorption of some electrolytes, which are some minerals, but, uh, and, and water and fluid balance. But it's the small intestine that we simply cannot live without, which is the major site of absorption of most of, uh, of our, the food intake that we have. Which food group is the most difficult for the body type to digest? What are the potential effects on a person's weight or health as a result of this? So the question is, what food types are the most difficult to digest? And that's completely dependent on the individual. Some individuals will complain that when they eat dense meat, let's say red meat, that they have a very hard time digesting. They may have gastrointestinal discomfort. They may have gas. They, have, they may have bloating, constipation, or diarrhea, for example. And that's a clear sign of problems digesting. Uh, that person would probably benefit by taking stomach acid or pancreatic enzymes to help their body digest that food. Perhaps genetically they don't make enough of, of, of the protein uh, digesting enzymes. On the other hand, a person might have difficulty and know they have di difficulty digesting fats or carbohydrates. Any of the symptoms I just mentioned for meat maldigestion or improper digestion could result from the improper digestion of carbohydrates and fats as well. And then again, depending on which food a person uh, does not digest uh, adequately, various types of enzymes might be used to improve absorption, or a person might uh, need to combine their foods a bit differently. That's known as a food combining, where, for example, fruit might interfere with the absorption and the digestion of protein, carbohydrates, and fats, because fruits can cause fermentation in the intestine uh, or overgrowth of different types of yeast organisms. So by having food and these foods together, that would create maldigestion in one person, but not in another person at all. So there are different ways of combining the diet and of cooking different foods and of using nutritional enzyme and acid supplements to improve the digestion of all major uh, food groups, meaning protein, carbohydrate, and fat food groups. Are there any supplements that a person should take to aid the effectiveness and efficiency of food absorption? Yes, as I mentioned, uh, digestive enzymes can be very helpful, but they should definitely be used with the instructions of a, of a trained clinical nutritionist because if you take stomach acids and enzymes uh, for too long, you actually will reduce your body's secretion or production of stomach acid and enzymes. So they should be used on and off at different intervals depending on the extent of the problem. Stomach acid can be particularly dangerous because it is, after all, stomach acid, and it could result in ulcers or esophagitis or gastritis or all sorts of adverse symptoms like heartburn. Uh, if you 
improperly use or take too much of the stomach acid. But on the other hand, stomach acid is used for a variety of health problems, including digestion, and when used correctly, is fundamental for improving our digestion. And then there are digestive enzymes, which are not acids, they're enzymes. They're different type, types of uh, digestive aids. And usually these digestive enzymes uh, are similar to or are meant to support the pancreas. The pancreas not only helps us balance blood sugar, but the pancreas also makes protein, carbohydrate, and fat digesting enzymes known as lipases, proteases, and amylases. And these um, ACEs, as they're called, or enzymes can be and are concentrated in supplement form, and they can be uh, tremendous uh, digestive aids, either with or without stomach acid. And I always like to use probiotics or healthy bacteria because whenever someone needs either stomach acid or pancreatic enzymes, they almost always have imbalances of uh, probiotics or healthy bacteria in the gut. So these different supplements, either probiotics, stomach acid, or pancreatic enzymes might be given together or maybe given a little bit differently relative to meal timing based on one's symptoms and health problems and as determined by one's nutritionist. How does the digestion of fluids, water in particular, aid the absorption of foods? Well, usually with my patients that are having digestive problems, uh, whether it's, again, constipation or gas or bloating, or they just feel that foods are sitting there too much, I, one of the first things I have them do is I instruct them not to drink fluids with their meals because drinking water, for example, with a meal will dilute stomach acid, and you do not want to dilute or make your stomach acid less effective while you're eating. So I'll usually have them, rather than drinking large amounts of fluid during their meals, if they have to drink something, I have them just sip small amounts of fluid or wait either an hour before a meal or an hour after a meal for fluid intake so one does not dilute their stomach acid. So I'm not aware of using fluids to improve digestion. Quite the opposite of fluids uh, can negatively impact one's digestive abilities. This has been Dr. Michael Wald.